Hunters, welcome back to another build video. I've really been enjoying my playthrough of New World and trying out different builds is probably the most exciting thing for me. Today we're looking at a musket main DPS as a sniper class accompanied by the ice gauntlet for slow crowd control. This playstyle of the musket is that of a sniper so you will be maintaining quite a bit of distance from the monsters. When you get pushed, the ice gauntlet is going to be there for you to slow down enemies slash back off and protect you from being hit while you reposition. So this build is targeted towards group PvE, dungeons, wars, it's all very good. Solo PvE is okay. For PvP, it can be ideal if you play in a group as long as you have tanks up front, but it's not good to solo groups. And 1v1 situations, you could have a good time if you practice enough. So we'll go over the talents, the attributes, the armor and perks, some gem recommendations, and we'll end off with a little bit of gameplay style showcasing. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and let me know in the comments if you try it out. If you find any of this video helpful, please consider leaving a like and sub for more New World videos. Alright, let's jump into the build. Let's take a look at the musket first. The main perks you're going to want for this are the powder burn on the left. Completely max it out to get that extended burn duration. Musket is going to be your main DPS so any damage over time will be significantly boosted thanks to your attributes. As well, while they are on fire, any of the following shots will deal 12% extra damage. Power Shot is the next skill that you'll want and that's just for straight up high damage. Shooter Stance is the final one and since you'll be at a distance, Shooter Stance is actually pretty perfect to get some quick damage in and maxing out this tree will also reduce all cooldowns of all your skills. Which is perfect because by the time you finish all 5 shots of the Shooter Stance, you'll need to reapply the burn to some enemies. So for the musket, there's a couple of ways you can play around with it but generally I'd say you start with the power burn to get that damage over time. Do your shooter stance before you get pushed into a power shot just kind of like to finish them off or get some high damage in before you recycle. Taking a look at the passives for the musket, let's start with the sharpshooter ones. Called shot because you are aiming as a sniper, you'll just get bonus damage, that's always welcome. Critical reload, now this is great for bossing specifically in a dungeon or any other sort of mini bosses on the map. You will be perched at the back especially if you're in a group, so hitting the head will be pretty easy for you with a little bit of practice. If you are a new player to the game and watching this video, don't add this perk until you're at least a good way into the story of the game and you've started doing dungeons and regularly farming bosses. Next, you're looking at Ballistic Advantage which basically removes the drop off damage since you are sniping from a distance and subsequently hit your mark which adds more damage the farther you are away from a monster. Again, the playstyle is really going to be looking at being perched at the back of a group or like attacking your enemies from afar, getting all those sniper shots in to get some good damage before they push you. Just a couple more here, the empowering headshot, basically just doing more damage as a sniper on the headshots. Called shot resupply which is ideal for your cooldowns, especially with the shooter stance, this will apply pretty well. Heightened precision, finally again a great perk to combine with the shooter stance for stacking extra damage as you get more shots in while aiming down sights. Finally, you can go ahead and grab that final sniper perk in this tree to complete the sniper class by adding a 3x zoom and getting additional damage to the headshot. The final two perks that you'll want to max out this build, salt on the wound from the trapper set, basically more damage to enemies with 30% or less health, again good for bossing and good for dungeoning. Finally, weakened defense. Now this will be helpful against armored and shielded enemies and this is going to be the big weakness of this class. You will find yourself struggling against shielded enemies the most so this perk will help you a little bit to clear up their shield and give you an opening to the head. And that's it for the musket class. Very ideally built for sniping and for most of the enemies at your level you should be able to get a couple headshots in to take them out. For bosses it is going to take a couple of cycles of your skills to actually get them down. For monsters of higher level, just regular farming mobs, it will take a couple shots and that's where the ice gauntlet support is going to come in. So the main perks that we're going to talk about for the ice gauntlet include the ice storm. Now this is a good ranged attack which will slow enemies down and it also applies some damage over time. And this will stack actually with your musket powder burn damage over time. So a lot of damage over time, it's very ideal for New World's AI because they always attempt to push you the second you start fighting. So the more damage over time you can get while they're closing in that distance, the less health they're going to have. In my opinion here, you only need the first two passives, even the second one is kind of pushing it. I would not max out this tree for this playstyle. The final perk would be good in dungeons, but most of your damage is going to come from the musket anyway, so we'll save the points for other perks. Ice Shower is the second skill, very ideal if you get pushed. 
This freezes monsters for a second and applies frostbite which also slows them down. This will be good if you're getting pushed and you need to back off for additional sniping. Max this tree out completely. All the perks do help with this playstyle including the extended duration, speeding you up for 2 seconds so you can reposition quicker, and it applies rent to lower their defense so your next musket shot will deal higher damage. Ideally, Ice Shower is kind of like the final nail in the coffin, by the time they actually get to you they should be pretty low and you want to just Ice Shower to freeze, weaken their defense and then musket shot fatality kill. Finally, the Ice Pylon. Very similar to the shower, if you get pushed this is good to put down. The pylon can deal some extra damage while you reposition. It also lasts quite a bit longer, so putting this down and then backing off to site would also be ideal so that the monsters that are pushing, they may get distracted and they may try to take your Ice Pylon out first. This streak can also be maxed out, it's just good for longer durations and more damage within the battle. Additionally, you can unlock the final perk in the Builder Tree that extends the pylon's frost radius which will be good for you as a sniper standing far back. Again, it'll damage the enemies and distract them a little bit longer which is great for your range and you'll also be able to protect you if the enemies push through the pylon, they can still damage them from behind. Now let's move on to the passives, let's talk about these real quick. Critical Rejuvenation. In the Ice Tempest tree, you'll want to start this just to start off the tree. Energized Critical will be ideal for critical damage since as a sniper class, you won't be rolling or dodging too much so you will have your stamina so some extra crits from when you apply your frost abilities will be nice. Critical Frost, again just adding a little bit more crit and it's really to help the last perk that we'll talk about here. Heavy Freeze. Now this will be helpful if you want to stop enemies in their tracks. You'll have to throw in a heavy attack and if they're in an ice storm, they'll be frozen for another second which you can then switch to your musket for a high damage headshot. Freezing them obviously is a great way to ensure that you get the next headshot and I would ideally maybe even make this using the power shot. The final two come from the builder tree. You'll want quick frost at the top right to quicken the pace if you do get pushed. As I mentioned, using Ice Shower will activate this and you can get out real quick. Finally, Frozen Touch. Now this will be the final perk if you actually get hit. So if the monster gets through everything that you put at them, this will slow them down when they melee you and you can escape a bit easier to reposition to then get some musket damage back in. And that's it for the talents for both of the weapons. So as you can see, the gauntlet really is there to support your musket class. In groups, it'll be very helpful for everyone actually, you can get some CC in while still dealing high damage with the musket from a good distance away. It's definitely going to take a little bit of practice to get into the swing of mixing both skills in solo play, but I guarantee you when you learn it, you'll have a blast like I am. Okay, let's change topics here. Let's talk about the attributes. For this build, you'll really want to be stacking decks with a side order of intelligence and a little bit of cons. Most of the damage will come from the musket at range, so you don't want a lot of that into int. You want that 4th and 5th dex nodes, which would be very ideal for the musket. So your goal should be to get there. My suggestion here would be to focus a lot of your level points into dex and a little bit into cons. You're not going to need a lot of constitution because as a sniper class, you will be perched pretty far back and away from the enemies. So you're not in the thick of it, you're not like tanking any damage, you don't need a lot of health. At the most, I would say the first node, nothing more than that for constitution. For intelligence, I would try to support that with armor perks. Armor perks that boost intelligence, try to raise that as much as you can from there. Don't put a lot of level points into it. Additionally, you can also craft food that actually boosts intelligence during your battle so that you can help with most fights and dungeons in particular. Now just as a quick disclaimer here, I haven't done the whole math because I haven't reached endgame yet, but I do know you get a total of 190 points from reaching level 60, which is great to get your decks pretty high. Combining that with armor for your intelligence and constitutions, it should be pretty good. If something changes, I will leave a pinned comment guys, so be sure to check back later on if you're still confused when you get to the higher levels. Or if someone else knows someone else that has calculated all these options, please leave a link in the comments below and you know, I'll pin it. So let's go over the perks, shall we? A quick reminder here first before we jump into it, these are going to be some suggestions. There are different builds that you can make and depending on the build that you make for your gameplay style or whatever dungeon you're trying to do or whatever objective you're trying to reach, you'll have to change the perks. You might have to change the armors. So again, don't stick to these perks. If, they, if you find a different armor that's better, go for it. With that being said though, these are some general perks that will actually help the build no matter what. Starting off, Crippling Powder Burn. Now this is the first perk that I really think you need. I think it can be on armor or weapon and it will slow your targets that are affected by burn. 
This is a really ideal perk for your musket, keeping them slow for an extra 5 seconds is huge time to land more headshots. Empowering Shooter Stance, great for this class just to add some extra damage to your shots. Vicious is another great perk, again adding extra damage to your critical damage and if you can find it or craft it, great to have. In terms of elements, Chain Lightning or Fire would be awesome to have, they're really fun to play around with. Although I haven't yet seen them on muskets, so if anyone knows if it's possible or not, leave a comment below. For the Ice Gauntlet, you must get Unending Thaw. Extending the frost effects is super ideal to keep the enemy slowed and give you more chance to hurt them. Chain Ice is also a great perk that'll also help the build. It's just kind of cool, Chain Ice will just give you a little bit more ice attacks to your ice attacks. Besides these perks, I think you need to focus the rest of your perks into bonuses for dexterity and intelligence. This would be ideal. As I said before, the more intelligence that you can get from the armor, the more stat points you can use for dex. Cool, and I'll leave it at that for the perks. If you have any questions or want me to look at any other perks, leave them in the comments below, guys. Let's talk about the gems real quick here. For your weapons for the musket, the Malachite gem would be ideal. When enemies are slowed by the ice gauntlet, that does count as a CC crowd control, so you will get that extra percent damage bonus. At epic tier, this gem will give you a 12% bonus. Diamond can be added to your ice gauntlet, most likely you'll be using ice skills from a distance so you'll still be at full health to prevent them from reaching you, so adding a percent damage works ideally in this situation. At epic, this adds 15% damage to your frost area damage over time. On the armor, onyx is probably the best one that you can do, good for protection if you get pushed by any of the monsters that attack you. If you're attempting PvP, Moonstone may be worth it here since most of the enemies will push you with a melee slash slash type weapon like a great axe or a sword. Thrust protection from an emerald could also be useful, a little bit more variable depending on the types of people and the meta that's going on in the game. And that's about it for the build guys, here's a little bit of gameplay just talk us through and walk through a little bit of how to use this build. So as a musket you are far distance as we mentioned, you are the sniper. Everyone's sort of taking the, the heat of the battle, they're kind of like drawing the monster's attentions, so you're far away getting that big headshot damage. Now keep in mind, I'm not max level so I don't have all the perks unlocked so I can't use the full capability of this build. But I am alternating here quite a bit, making sure the burn is on and then going to my shooter stance to get some couple of shots in, then switching to power shot if I have time. Switching to the ice gauntlet again, helping everyone just get a little bit of that CC. Monsters are slowed here, so if I had the perks, I would be getting some extra damage too because they're CC'd. Again, just to show off a boss here as well, again, everyone takes the attention. So you are far out getting the headshot damage. Even if you get pulled in, back it up, get some space, put the ice gauntlet or any effects on the ice gauntlet you need, and then go back to your headshots. Again, as I mentioned, on solo PvE, it's a little bit tough to use because you're going to be taking all the attention, so they're going to push you right away. So you got to make sure you're using the Ice Storm and the Ice Shower to kind of create that distance, slow them down a bit, and then back off so that you get some space. You're definitely going to consume a little bit more stamina doing this. You're going to have to reposition, make sure you're putting the ice on to slow them down, get some space, you know, and then get into your shooter stance and get some damage off. So it's going to be a little bit more movement than when you're in a team. Also, ignore my aim. I'm a Pepega gun shooter. And that is the Frosty Sniper build. Thank you all for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the build. Let me know in the comments, guys, how it is for you. As usual, if you enjoyed the video, please drop a like and consider sharing the build with your friends. Other than that, we shall see you all in the next one. Stay safe, be happy, and keep hunting. Scott Sensei's out.